Would you like to watch me draw the Born-Haber cycle for sodium oxide? I know you would. So, let's begin. I like to start with my pure elements standard state. I'm going to need some solid sodium and I'm actually going to need two moles of it in order to make a mole of sodium oxide. So I'm going to start with two Na solids. Now I'm going to need only one mole of O, but I'm supposed to get that from oxygen gas, which is O2. In order to lower that to just one mole of actual O, I'm going to need to include the coefficient of a half here. Hmm? Not bad so far. Now, I like to finish with my upper level here, which is always my two metal ions in the gas phase, the electrons that you separated away from them, and the unionized atom of your nonmetal. I have two Na's and an O, along with the two separated electrons from the Na's on my top shelf here. Now, how to convert from here to there? It's the same process every time. You need to gasify anything here that is not already a gas. For me, that's sodium. So I'm going to add some energy and convert these to Na gas atoms. My O2, or my half mole of O2, is untouched during that. Now I need to separate my O's from each other. That involves breaking apart an O2 bond. It's actually a double bond, but there is a bond enthalpy associated with it. My Na's will be untouched in that process, and I'm going to have my full mole of O now that I've done that. I would like to, or the only other thing I actually have to do is remove electrons from my Na's. I'm going to show that all in one step because it's a single ionization energy, or a single ionization from a charge of zero to a charge of plus one, but I'm going to have to do it to two moles of the sodiums. What I do at that point is I give myself a down arrow because energy is released when I combine these electrons with the oxygen. Now I'm actually going to do that twice, like once for each of the electrons added. I'm going to keep my two Na plus gases. I'm going to use up one of the electrons and I'm going to convert this to O minus. That's adding one electron to the oxygen. Then I leave my sodiums untouched again and I add the second electron to the oxygen atom. It is now an O2 minus ion. The end goal, or the bottom, of a Born-Haber cycle is always the solid ionic compound that you were supposed to create. Na2O, sodium oxide. In order to get the gas phase ions from sodium oxide, you need to add energy, and that happens to be called the lattice enthalpy. It goes right here, and it is an endothermic process. To get sodium oxide from its pure elements standard state is actually just an enthalpy of formation delta HF. It, for an ionic compound, is usually exothermic, so I represent it with a down arrow. I'm just going to spend a little time to label the other arrows here. I am adding energy to gasify the sodium. That's delta H vaporization for sodium, but we're actually vaporizing two moles of it. So I'm going to have to double that number, which is usually in kilojoules per mole. What I'm doing here is breaking apart half a mole of O2s. That's called a dissociation enthalpy of O2. But because I only have half a mole of it, I get to cut that number in half, or multiply it by 0.5. Then I'm removing an electron from each of the sodium atoms. Removing an electron is an endothermic process. I call it ionization energy one of sodium. And again, because I'm doing it to two moles of it, I need to multiply it by two. I have actually separated out my two electron affinities. Electron affinity being the amount of energy released when you add electrons. Here is Ea number one for oxygen, and here is electron affinity number two for oxygen because it is adding a second electron to the already negatively charged O. 
Now, some teachers will ask you to calculate one of these values based on all the others. The way I personally do that is to convert them all to positive numbers, do the multiplications that I need to do, and then I can just add up all the numbers on this side, add up all the numbers on this side, leaving one of them as x, an unknown, and then solving for x. I can determine whether it's positive or negative later, knowing whether or not it's an endothermic or an exothermic process. Now, if your teacher wants you to to preserve all the positives and negatives, I'm sure he or she will show you how to do that, then do it her, their way. Cool? But this is it, this is the Born-Haber cycle. I drew it, you can use it to calculate. Best of luck.